Hey guys, this is Cruz Roy uh, with the FW450 and the FW200. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of uh, posts about batteries. How do I charge them? Uh, why, aren't they, why are they not balanced? And all this stuff. But I don't want to bang Flywing because when they sell you a helicopter, you not only get the four AA batteries, which I assume I got them, and you get a free charger. All right, now this is just a basic LiPo charger. This is for the 200. And if you look at it, it's only the balance lead into the battery. Now these probably cost about $3, because Flywing buys a million of them and just shoves them into their things. So this is an E350 compact charger, 25 watts. All that doesn't make any sense to me because I don't think there's enough power in there to act like 25 watts, but it could be. But like I said, I'm not bashing Flywing. They're giving you a helicopter that's ready to fly. You got the transmitter, you got the helicopter, you got a battery, you got a battery charger, you got batteries for the transmitter, blah blah blah, you got blades. If you build a kit, you do not get all of that. So yes, this charger is very cheap. And even though it just plugs to the balance leads, it doesn't have the proper information going through the main leads to balance out everything. And what I've noticed with everybody, they're only getting anywhere from 75 to almost 90% full. I think that's a thing that Flywing did. They don't want the battery going and superseding, but the pro superseding and exploding, they put it at the lower level. So at least you don't have any issues with these batteries exploding. Uh, LiPo batteries are very dangerous. Google it. They're all over the place. Tesla cars catch on fire. All electric cars catch on fire. Helicopters catch on fire. I use military grade ammo boxes to store all my batteries in the house just in case. It, it depletes the oxygen completely. Even if they explode, they're just going to stay in that container. Uh, I have all kinds of batteries. I've been flying helicopters and drones for the past 15 years. I have big batteries, small batteries, 10,000, 20,000 for drones. You know, and the point is, people are coming out asking, well, how do I charge this if I buy this other LiPo chargers? Let me disconnect this. All right, so this is the Flywing. I'm just going to disconnect that for right now. One of my favorites which is not cheap is the C4 240 Duo alright they have a touchscreen one don't get involved with it it's it's a pain um, just stay with the standard one if you like but there are better charges out there um, the other thing what happens is you get into more money more money more money I understand that everybody's like well I gotta buy another charger I gotta buy another this um, the simplest thing for the, the novice is you pick up one of these. This is one of these funky 24-in-1 ad adapters. I mean, it'll adapt to any other any battery you have, sometimes, sometimes not. And then you plug it into your LiPo. So now you have both the balance and the main leads connected. Um, for instance, I will grab... Try to see which one I can grab right now. I'll grab this Zippy 2700. I'm going to plug it in to the connector over here. And then you have to plug the balance lead in. Plug it into the first port. This is a dual port setup. Okay, what I want to make understand to you, somebody out there said, oh, I got a 5000 and how many amps do I charge this at? It's a 35C, where basically this is kind of a, a slow battery. Now they have 100C batteries. Now this 35C means how many amps can go out of the battery. Out. Do you see that? Out. It doesn't mean charge this battery at 35 in. This thing's lucky it takes 5 in. 5 amps. But I want to show you a formula. It's very easy. Before we even get started showing you how this one works or whatever, how to figure out your batteries. Now I gotta tell you something about the LiPos from Flywing. They have one that's a 5000. Look at this tank. This is a 5000. Alright, this flies a lot bigger heli. It's also a 6 cell. You can get a 5 or 6 cell for the V3 at a 5000, but it's not nowhere near this battery. Alright? And, and someone said, charge it at 15 amps. I would never, ever 
charge this light bulb at 15 amps that is bull crap and I'm gonna show you a simple way if you charge this thing every time at 15 amps it might not explode but you're gonna deteriorate the lithium-ion in this battery and it's gonna be a piece of crap very soon this battery here is 15 years old I still get a 95% out of this battery every time 1c perfect but it's gonna take you a lifetime to charge all right so what I want to do is grab a few batteries here. I'm just going to show you an easy way of how to figure out how many amps I want to charge this. Now with the Flywing LiPo charger, you don't have to worry about that. You plug it in, it does everything. Problem is, the LiPos have been coming out unevenly balanced, and that can cause a problem over time too. So it's a nice charger to use when you're getting started, but when you get into the hobby, if you like it, get out of it. Get any one of these, I mean, Here's the cheapest B6 V3 smart charger. It actually has digital power. This thing will power anything. If you have a dead LiPo, it will energize it to a point where you can start to rebalance it. This is a cool charger for $17.99 off of. All right, now you got a Thunder Power. This one's a lot older, a lot bigger, a lot more information, and also another charger that can revive a bad cell. I've had that one for years, all right? So there's many types of adapters. We not only have adapters, we have bridge adapters that you can charge six batteries at a time, but you're getting into a whole different information. If you got six 5,000s on here, now you can go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 30 amps to charge five 5,000s. That's not a problem because you have five batteries hooked up. They have to be the same. Don't put a 1,000 milliamp and a 5,000 and a 2,500. You can't do that. You'll screw up everything. So there's all kinds of adapters. Another thing that you should buy, which is cheap, um, is just a battery tester. We'll do that first before I get into how to tell what I need. So if I take, this is an FW uh, 1300. It's an ovonic battery that I use for my FW200. I'm going to plug it into this tester. All right, and what it does is it tells you the total voltage. Make sure you're on LiPo. See the type? These things are like 12 bucks on eBay all day long. If you go to China, you probably buy 10 of them for 5 bucks. So LiPo, it does Life, it does Lion, and it does LiPo, right? Just make sure you're on the correct one also you got 11 and 37 volts but look at the percentage it's showing me the percentage of the battery this battery only has 31 percent life left in it so i'm not going to plug it into my heli i'm going to recharge it all right next thing you can do is cells cell one is 379 cell two is 379 cell three is 379 so they're pretty good they're not off balance as a 93 but that's the third digit but if you did have a battery that was out of balance, you push and hold the type. It's going to beep, and what it's going to do is cycle through all the cells and try to balance it. This one's not going to do it because they're pretty close. If I can find one that's out of balance, I'll show you what it does. But this will balance the battery as well as check it. All right? So let's get out of here. This is a good choice. Cheap money. Check the battery before you fly. 99%, even 89% is a good time, but 35 I'm not putting it in the heli. So we'll put that aside for now. All right, so before I start this charger up, which is my favorite, I use this for my drone batteries as well. I use, uh, I use Texas Instruments software to rebuild LiPos for the drones because of the BMS systems. The problem with these batteries, they don't have a battery management system. So when you fully charge this, you throw it in a closet, it's gonna stay fully charged. And when it starts to expand, it's gonna discharge in a wrong way. So these battery chargers also have storage. They have discharge, they have charge, they have balance charge. So when you wanna store your batteries, you can spend some time on a weekend, stay close to your batteries, hit discharge, it'll discharge the batteries into storage. Then you can put them away. They won't deplete. If they're at 20%, they'll stay at 20%. A drone battery, if it's at 20%, it's going to deplete, deplete week by week until it's gone. And then you have to have someone like me fix it. But anyways, okay. I'm going to get a magic marker. I don't like writing on my batteries, but this is to help people out. Here's a, here's a tattoo battery, all right? I think you can see that. 850 milliamps 
So how do I figure out how I can charge this? You can use the, either use the fly wing, or if you buy a charger like this, you can control the amps. Go to the third digit. One, two, three. 0.85 amps. That's what you can charge that at. Wow, that was tough. Here's a 1,000 milliamp battery, right? Let's go three digits. One, two, three. I'll put the dot there. One amp all day long. You can charge this safely. All right. Now I know there's guys out there talking about the C rating. This is 75 C rating. Like I said, that's 75 C out. That the helicopter can suck out of this, do its stunts, fly around. These batteries were actually made for drone speedsters, uh, drone pilots that race drones, like drone racers, all right? That's why the C rating is so high. It works well for the FW250, but it does not, the FW200, sorry, doesn't need 75C. The thing can fly off at 30C all day long. So again, let's do another one, 650. It doesn't matter how many cells or anything. That has nothing to do with this. 650, three digits back, 0.65. That's the most you should charge that, 6 point, 0.65 amps, all right? How about one that's a little bigger? We got the 1300. Did I talk about it already? I probably did. Probably that crack I'm smoking. Same thing, 1300 with an 80C rating. Any, any drone with this battery in it can suck 80C currents out of this current amps out of this battery. No problem. But when you go to charge it, it's always lower. The discharge rate, high discharge, it even says it on the battery if you can read it. It doesn't mean high charge. It doesn't work that way. All right? So again, three digits. What is that? 1.3 amps to charge this all day long is perfectly fine. All right? I wouldn't go any more, any less. We got one down here that you possibly can already see. It's a zippy, a zippy pack. Now these were from Hobby King. These are cheap batteries. These are not your high-end, top-of-the-line batteries. A lot of guys that fly planes use them. It's only 25C. Will it fly the FW450? Of course it will. Of course it will. It's a low-head speed helicopter. Fly it all day long until it runs out of juice. But again, we're looking at it. It's, it has nothing to do with the C rating. This is a high-discharge LiPo. 25C isn't really high. This was an older battery. This is the way they called them back then. But again, three digits back, a little dot, 2.7 amps. All right, 2.7 amps for a 2700 amp, and you'll be safe. You won't burn your house to the ground, please. I'm gonna show you in a minute, but um, not blow up my house, but anyways. So the next biggest one I got here, this is one of my small ones, my 500 helis. This is a 35C out, and it flies a SAB 500 Super Sport, all right, and it can do 3D and all that. So the 75C, 85C, 100C is not needed in helis, not all of them. The new bigger helis, yes. On a 6-cell, 35C is fine. This is a 22.2 volts, it's a 6-cell. All right, same thing. How can I charge this battery? All right, but what I'm going to talk about, three digits over, boom. This is a Pulse battery, one of the most expensive batteries out there. They come from Heli Direct. if you want to look at them. They're very expensive, they're very well made. Never had a problem with them. Five amps all day long to charge this battery is fine. All right? But let me talk to you about, let's pretend this is the Flywing battery. And it says 5,000 milliamps. All right? To find out the actual milliamps, fly your heli till it starts beeping it wants to land. That means the cells are almost at 3.6, I think, or 3.4. Now you put it on charge, if you have a charger like this, it will tell you how many amps it popped into the battery at full charge. And we'll start with that with this one. Now, what I found out on cheaper batteries, inexpensive we'll call them, they're not bad batteries, but inexpensive, the 5000 might only be a 3850, 3750. They're not full 5,000 milliamps, because you could, if I had one, I would show you, because I don't have any Flywing batteries. This battery here is a 6-cell 5,000, and a 6-cell would work in an FW, but this thing weighs more than the whole helicopter. There's no way this would even hold it up, all right? It's not the heli for that, all right? So the quality is different, all right? 
But anyways, little tips before we get out of here. So anyways, this battery's on. I'm on channel one. There's two channels, one and two, and they're right here. All right, this is a 2700 Zippy. So what I'm going to do is hit enter. I'm going to look for lithium. It's already on lithium battery, but if I want to scroll through, it does NICAD. It does PB, acid, user settings. You can create your own settings. Extra functions. That's where I was talking about. If I go into here, they have meter licks. You can check the battery status. You can check the IR of the battery. You can balance a lithium battery just from straight out of the box without putting any info in. You also have digital power. <clears throat> the thing about digital power, sorry about that. Digital power, if you have any dead cells, you can boost power in this. This thing is not going to tell the charger to, hey, screw off. We're fucked up here. Oops, sorry. It's not going to do that. All right? It's going to push power in here, but don't do it a lot. Just do it for like 10 seconds, pull it off, test it. See if the cell that's bad boosts it up enough so you can put it on balance. All lipos need to be at a certain point before they'll start balancing, period. You can't have one volt in every lipo and it'll start charging. Never going to happen. I don't care who you are. But anyways, let me get out of this. So we're back on lithium battery. Number one, 2700. So I'm going to hit enter. All right. Like I said, you use this 2.7 amps. It's on 0.3 amps but it's also on one cell. You can change the cells. This battery here is a 6.0. So what you do is hit enter. You go to LiPo, LiPo charge, we want to change that. Oh, wait a minute, I had it. But anyway, let me bring the amps. So the minimum is 2.7. You can go higher if you want to destroy these batteries, but hit enter. The 3.7 volt, this is actually a, is this a 22? Always read your batteries, it's going to tell you. This one's a 6 cell, so it's a 22 too. So over here, we want to change this voltage to 22 too. Brings it up to a 6 cell, but this is a LiPo charge. I want to hit enter again. So it says LiPo. It's not letting me change the charge, sorry. Let me back out. Lithium battery. I'm in the right spot. There we go. I forgot to do it when I first punched in. You can have fast spot. There's the storage I told you about. Discharge and balance. That's the one I was looking for. So I'm on balance, 2.7 amps, 2.2, 6 cell. Always read what's on your battery here. It's going to help you out. All this information is all you need to put into here. And like I said, it's a lot better than, you know, this just plug the balance charger in until the light turns purple. Two different animals. And what we're going to do here is just hit enter. Now it's doing a battery check. If everything's okay, it's going to tell you to confirm and enter. I'm going to hit enter. And now, we can see what's going on. It boosted the charger to 23 amps, I mean 23 volts. It's balancing. This is the, amper the time, and this is the amperage going in. But you can also hit enter again, and plus, and there's all the cells. So you got a 386, a 3872, 3876, 3884, a 3890, 3872. So you can actually watch the balancing happen. All right. How full is this battery? I didn't check it with the battery checker, so I couldn't tell you. It'll charge until it makes its limit. It'll shut down. So I can go back. But right here, these are the milliamps going into this battery you know so let me do a check on that before we continue because I'm not watching the milliamps go up shut it off 
unplug the balance, bring over the, that's where this thing comes in handy, you're like, why isn't it pulling in amps? Well, it says 42%, so it does need it. Um, let me check cells, 3A2, 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 3A3, 3A2, 3A2, full charge. That is almost perfectly balanced, but it'll never get perfect, but that is way perfect, and that's okay. So, we're at 42%. Let's do it again. Might have been because I was playing with everything, but you can see the amp draw. So it's at 47%, so this 27 amp, it should be almost half of that, a little bit more than half. So, hold enter. Okay, program, lithium battery, enter. We're at 2.7, 22. We're on balance charge, hold enter. It's gonna check the battery, confirm. All right. Sorry about that. It's from unplugging it during a cycle. You shouldn't do that. You should shut it off and reboot. But like I said, that number right there, the three digits, that's showing you the amps you're putting back into the battery. So what I was saying is, before, after you discharge a battery flying any heli or whatever, you can check right here. It'll show you exactly what that battery is. If this thing goes into home mode like one of these helicopters or a drone goes into return home that means that battery is almost dead and then when, you, when it automatically lands that's where the cells should be. There's gonna be a little bit of milliamps in there in voltage but this is where you're gonna find out like if I charge this battery I'm gonna get almost 4900 milliamps into it when it goes to its lowest side. This battery is a little cheaper, 2700. I bet you I get no more than 1900 milliamps out of this battery. But this is Cruise Roy on all different kinds of chargers. This one being about 17 bucks on Amazon. This one here is a lot more. It's like 80 to 100 dollars. Uh, the Thunder Power, if you buy them used, they're about 30 bucks. Um, so there's all kinds of different ones. Stay away from the touch screens; they'll drive you nuts. The buttons are better. And um, this is Cruz Roy, and I hope this helped everybody out, and I'm out of here.